Live from WTVO Rockford and your home team, Eyewitness News at 5 starts now. The prosecution introduces new evidence in the federal murder trial for Floyd Brown. FBI agents say DNA found on crime scene weapons could help their case. Virtual currency is growing in popularity, but you might be confused on getting started. State line investors and local expert break down how to protect your digital dollars. And local law enforcement and healthcare providers send more aid to Ukraine. Officials work to ensure the supplies will reach the front lines. Good evening, I'm Mimi Murphy. And I'm Eric Wilson. Forensic examiners testify about crime scene DNA in the fatal shooting of McHenry County Sheriff's Deputy Jacob Keltner. The trial for his accused killer, Floyd Brown, continued today. Rachel Perry's live outside the courthouse. Rachel, how much testimony do prosecutors have left to present? Mimi and Eric, it seems like we could be nearing the end of witnesses' prosecution plans to call to testify, meaning we'll soon be hearing from Brown's defense. Today we heard from a few different FBI agents, one who testified to finding Brown's DNA on the four firearms prosecution claims Brown had in the hotel and his car, claiming to have found blood on one of the rifles belonging to a man which she says matched Brown. Aside from DNA, another agent testified about the shooting the government claims happened inside Hotel Room 305 that morning. If you remember yesterday, several U.S. Marshal deputies testified to being shot at multiple times while trying to serve Brown an arrest warrant. The FBI agent says his team was able to track 11 bullets by documenting holes and imperfections, claiming all bullets appeared to travel from inside room 305, through the door and walls, exiting in the hallway or into room 306 across the hall. Coming up at 6, an FBI agent claims Brown's data shows him searching, quote, cops being shot just two months before Deputy Keltner was killed. But for now, reporting live in Rockford for your home team, I'm Rachel Perry. Rachel, thanks for that live update. A Rockford man will spend nearly half a year behind bars after pleading guilty to grooming charges. Adrian Ryder sentenced to 180 days in jail for grooming. This comes after police identified him as a suspect in a 2020 sexual assault case. Those charges have been dismissed. Ryder also is sentenced to two years probation. Illinois sets a near record for monthly marijuana sales across the state. Adult use pot products numbers rose to their highest this year and the second most ever. Consumers bought slightly more than 3 million products last month, worth nearly $131 million. December 2021 holds the record, 3.1 million products and nearly $138 million. March 2020 is the lowest month on record. Many believe we're heading towards a cashless society. Debit and credit cards already are most commonly used when shoppers are ready to check out. Now, a relatively new idea is moving in, cryptocurrency. Nikel Delgado gives us more information as to what cryptocurrency is. Nikel. Eric, Mimi, cryptocurrency isn't like cash. It's digital, enabling everyone to use instant payments to anyone, anywhere in the world. And that's not without risks. We watch the charts like you know at least three times a day I'm popping in to see where specific coins that I have are what they're doing. Cryptocurrency is estimated to be a 1.7 trillion dollar market. Ben Otwell lives in Rockford. He uses crypto but admits it's not a get rich quick scheme. It involves tedious work which is one reason why many people end up getting scammed due to the wrong information. I really pay attention to that. Um, I don't click any links that don't come directly from the legitimate site, you know, or something that I can't verify, you know, but because there are, there's tons of scams. Cryptocurrency is not governed or managed by anyone. Instead, it's a software. And while it's designed to replace cash, a local professor warns there are some risks. Take into account of the cons, problems, and be aware of the problems. Uh, they can. Uh, they can invest, they can trade, uh, but they should be very cautious, very, very cautious because there is no fraud protection. As more people become interested in crypto, scammers follow. The technology is new, but the scams are the same. Please, it seems not possible to have a society only with cryptocurrencies. 
So it, it can't replace the cash. It can't replace the cash as of now, at least. While Atwell believes cryptocurrency has many opportunities for people, there's still room for improvements. You always want to do a little due diligence on projects you're, you're you know, thinking of investing in or especially new coins because people can, you can mint your own coin and it's fairly simple to do. Some professional athletes get paid in cryptocurrency, and right now some people are actually taking out loans on their digital coins to buy cars and houses, all through cryptocurrency. Eric? Lots to sort out there. Thanks, Nikel. A stateline police department canine will be safer on the street thanks to a donation. Solo from the Belvedere Police Department received a bullet and stab protective vest thanks to the nonprofit Vested Interest in Canines. Here's a picture of Solo wearing the new vest. Vested Interest has provided more than 4,500 vests to canines in all 50 states. There are an estimated 30,000 police dogs across the country. The program is open to U.S. canines that are at least 20 months old and actively employed and certified with law enforcement or related agencies. Local law enforcement sends more aid to the front lines in Ukraine. The Winnebago County Sheriff's Office has donated retired equipment to Eastern Europe. This includes vests and helmets for the resistance against the Russian invasion. Bloomingdale St. Andrew Ukrainian Orthodox Church is helping to ensure delivery of that equipment. Stateline health care providers also prepare to send aid overseas. Surgical assistants and other team members at FHN Medical Center have gathered boxes of supplies to donate. These include surplus medical supplies and instruments for procedures. Illinois raises hundreds of thousands of dollars for a cause a little closer to home. Jersey Mike's locations in the state raised more than $730,000 for Special Olympics last week. The company's nationwide day of giving, March 30th, saw restaurants donate 100% of sales to the 2022 Games. The Illinois sales are part of $20 million raised across the U.S. That is a record-breaking number. This year's Games begin June 5th in Orlando, Florida. Governor J.B. Pritzker approves paid COVID sick leave for vaccinated school staff in Illinois. Pritzker signed the bill today. It prevents monetary penalties for staff who take personal or family time off during a COVID diagnosis. The bill includes classroom teachers, administrators, bus drivers, and food service workers who've gotten a COVID shot. The state's Education Association says this comes at a critical time as Illinois faces a teacher shortage. An Illinois Teachers Union says the newly approved sick leave will keep schools safe from future COVID variants. The Illinois Federation of Teachers says the relief measure can ease the effects of fluctuating infection rates. IFT also noted a majority of its members are fully vaccinated. The union says it will continue to work with Governor Pritzker and lawmakers to encourage higher vaccination numbers. People with student loans get another reprieve to pay those loans back. The federal government postponed payments during the pandemic. That federal freeze was supposed to expire May 1st. Today, the White House announced it plans to extend the moratorium until August 31st. U.S. Democrats say congressional leaders reached a deal to approve $10 billion in additional funding to fight COVID. However, Republicans say that deal could come with strings attached, such as no direct payments to Americans. Alexander Limon is keeping you connected to the nation's capital. On Capitol Hill, congressional leaders reached a tentative agreement on another round of COVID relief, but not everyone is on board. Congress wants to spend more money for future COVID, for future vaccines, for future variants, when there's no need to do so. Despite the objections of some, like Georgia Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer said Congress will approve $10 billion in additional funding. Putting in the work today to keep our nation prepared against new variants will make it less likely that we get caught off guard. The money Congress has agreed to will go toward continuing to provide free COVID vaccines and tests to Americans, as well as therapeutic treatments. But the $10 billion Congress plans to approve is much less than the $22 billion President Biden was hoping for. President Biden had said that without more funding from Congress, critical supplies could begin to run out. Now the White House says this package from Congress is a jumping off point. This does not, will obviously not meet all of those, uh, all of those uh, needs, uh, di dire needs. But some Republicans are also considering tying passage of the $10 billion agreement to renewal of Title 42, the pandemic rule that keeps most asylum seekers out of the U.S. In Washington, 
Alexandra Limon. Now, your first warned weather forecast from Chief Meteorologist Candace King. Well, in some areas we have a little bit more cloud cover. In others, we've got some breaks in those clouds, and we're seeing a little more sunshine here this evening. Uh, we look to the north on our Mercy Isle Sky Track camera now, looking up north here, the river up across Rockford. We've got a mostly cloudy sky. You go a little bit further east, you've got some breaks in those clouds. Either way, we were able to rise into the 50s for this afternoon, fairly close to where we should be actually a little above for this time in April. We're at 55 in Freeport, 53 in Belvedere, 56 right now in Rockford and Rochelle, 54 this last hour for our weather watcher Bob in the southeast end of Rockford. No rainfall, no rain yet for Ben in South Beloit, sitting at 53 and a dew point temperature right now of 41. We have a few very isolated kind of uh, radar returns showing up here across the area, but none of that reaching the ground just yet. Can't completely rule out an isolated shower or two here as we go through this evening, but a better chance for rain comes in once we get uh, late this evening after about eight nine o'clock that's when that cold front comes through we've got two storm systems actually that we're keeping an eye on one up to the northwest another one down to the southeast the one in the southeast actually giving uh, quite a bit of severe weather across parts of georgia South Carolina, this will uh, kind of work a little bit further there into southern North Carolina. Numerous severe thunderstorm warnings there lining up along that uh, severe line of thunderstorms. And with embed embedded within that, we've actually had numerous tornado warnings. There have actually been quite a few confirmed tornadoes down there across parts of South Carolina. So a very active uh, day and evening in the southeast. That is not going to impact us, but we watch us up to the northwest. We may get a rumble of thunder with that here tonight just as we pull in quite a bit of moisture but we are lacking a little bit of that instability. We've had a southeasterly wind warm front sits just to the south that warm front lifts north here through the night so that actually helps keep our temperatures in the 50s as we go through much of this evening but it is also going to bring in a little bit more moisture and with that we've got the rain that comes in so you get an isolated shower to here these next couple of hours rain chances increase after about eight nine o'clock this evening evening. We've stopped future cast at nine o'clock. Notice the rain coming in. We might actually see a little heavy rainfall come in centered around midnight tonight. So do not be surprised if you hear some heavy downpours coming in uh, with that. Notice temperatures are still right around that 50 degree mark. This will be moving out from west to east after two o'clock tomorrow morning. When you wake up tomorrow morning early on, sun comes up, you're going to see the sunshine. We are going to dry out for tomorrow, at least in the first part of the day. Cloud cover rotates back in on the back side of that. We've got another kind of chance for a few scattered showers for tomorrow afternoon. Some of that may actually have some small hail just because our freezing level will be very low in the atmosphere because of the cold pocket of air that'll be up above. We really don't see the cold air wrap in tomorrow, but it comes in tomorrow night. And with that, you've got a couple of flurries mixed in with those scattered rain showers heading into the day on Thursday. Same thing Thursday night then into Friday. We look ahead into next week. We get a big ridge of high pressure that sets up over the southeast. You get kind of the stationary boundary off to the west and northwest. Around that, we're going to bring in some warmth. How quickly we see those temperatures warm up, how active we get next week, depends on the overall placement of that warm front. It goes to the north. I would not be surprised if our temperatures next Tuesday, Wednesday are in the 70s. But if it stays south, we get that rain chance that comes in. Mid-April, though, does look like our temperatures could drop back and we fall back below average. So I guess we'll take what we can get. 58 for tomorrow afternoon, 46 on Thursday, 42 on Friday. We'll keep those numbers, guys, in the 60s by next week. Now sports with sports director Scott Lever. Baseball is back in Beloit. The Sky Carp took the field here earlier today at ABC Supply Stadium for their first practice. And right now they're getting ready for a little extra BP and some jogging and some other activities here. As some of the fans will be welcomed into the ballpark. Exciting times right now as we get ready for a new season. The season opener is going to be a week from tonight. The home opener, I should say, is the Wisconsin Timber Rattlers will be here. The actual season opener will be this Friday, and the guys will open on the road. They'll be at Cedar Rapids. There is excitement because this is the first full season of baseball here at this lovely new ballpark, ABC Supply Stadium. The team returned several key players from last year. As well as some new ones, there's pitcher Dax Fulton, who is ranked the ninth best prospect in the Miami Marlins farm system. There's also outfielder Victor Mesa and shortstop Nassim Nunez, two more top prospects. 
and back this year, catcher Will Banfield had a good season last year, drove in 42 runs for Beloit. There are some other new faces, including the manager, Jorge Hernandez. He managed the Marlins' low Class A team last year in Jupiter, Florida. He's excited about this group of guys that he'll open the season with. We're thrilled to be here. You know, uh, the guys look forward, come to a beautiful facility here in Beloit, so we are very, very excited to be here. Tell me a little bit about the makeup of this team. You spent a lot of time helping to develop these guys over the winter, so you know all about them. Uh, how much talent are we going to see here on this Beloit team? It's a very uh, it's a, it's a special group, a very good, very talented, a lot of talent on the field. We have a great combination of good speed defense and good pitching, so we should be, we should be solid all the way around. Should be a very exciting team. You add in the fact that it's now a new name, the Sky Carp, in addition to this new ballpark. And it's going to be a lot of fun times here, I think, this summer in Beloit. Some big news out of Major League Baseball today. An announcement made the catchers will no longer be flashing pitching signs to the pitchers. They'll instead be using technical devices. Catchers will wear a transmitter with buttons on their wrists to make pitch calls. Pitchers will have receivers in their hats that pick up the signals. This should cut down on sign stealing in baseball and also improve the pace of play. Big news out of Augusta today. Tiger Woods says he intends to play in the Masters. If he does, he'll tee off Thursday morning at 9.34 Central Time. Well, as of right now, I feel like I am going to play as of right now. Um, I'm going to play nine more holes tomorrow. Um, uh, my recovery has been good. I've been very excited about how I've recovered each and every day, and that, that's been the, the, the challenge. Um, so we've got another day of nine more holes, and uh, then come game time. The Bulls have a tough one tonight. They will host the Bucks. They're own three against the Bucks this season. The Ice Hogs will play for the second straight night against the Henderson Silver Knights. The Hogs lost their last night four to one. At sports, we'll be right back. Warn interactive radar. Good place to kind of track and follow some of the showers as they move in here this evening. Isolated shower too these next couple of hours. Better chance here later this evening with some heavier rainfall as we get closer to midnight tonight. Might hear an isolated rumble of thunder or two. Temperatures in the 40s tonight. We're up to about 58 tomorrow. 46 on Thursday. A little snow mixing in with some of those rain showers those two days, Thursday, Friday, and then warming up by next week. Thanks, Candace. And thank you for spending some of your time with us. Stay safe.